One thing we all have in common, we all need sleep. But for some, it's a little more complicated than that. Most of us have heard stories about or know someone who sleepwalks. But why does it happen? How far can it go? In our special report, Up, Not Awake, photojournalist Zach Rasmus and I look for some answers behind this midnight mystery. I've been a sleepwalker as long as I can remember. According to my mother, my sleepwalking started when I was very young. Most are pretty familiar with the idea of sleepwalking. So sleepwalking is, as the name implies, walking during your sleep when you shouldn't be walking. While more common in children, about 4% of adults, like Tammy Kangas and Kelly Simons, don't grow out of it, oftentimes taking on daily tasks in the middle of the night. You know, that's the confusing part of it. You know, when I wake up in the morning and I have a plate of eggs sitting there that I cooked, um, the pans on the, the stove and the spatula sitting there on the counter. Everything looks good, just like I had done it when I was awake. What I do mostly is clean in my sleep. Normally, it's, it's putting my laundry away, which has, you know, somehow made it out of the dryer and is, you know, in my bed. It can even turn dangerous. I was at a friend's house. I think I was probably 18 or so. And so I was at an unfamiliar place and got up in the middle of the night and crashed and actually broke my nose, had to go to the hospital. The weird thing was, of course, that I'm laying on the floor in a puddle of blood and everything. I was still sound asleep. But why do some people sleepwalk? It's a question we asked Munton sleep medicine specialist, Dr. Martha Frankowski. So our main sleep cycles are that REM and non-REM, and then we have wake. So there's this disassociation between our brain and our body of what it should be doing. So even though we should be asleep and not get up and walking around, we're sleepwalkers are awake enough to get up and do activity, but not aware. So the connections that should be shut off aren't shut off. The ones that should be on aren't necessarily on. So you're kind of in that, that gray zone between wake and sleep. Both Kelly and Tammy say they can sort of tell when it's happening, just not always why. There's been lots of times where I know I'm up in the night. I don't know why, other than I may be walking around doing something. I can't stop it. It's like I'm in that in-between being awake and sleeping. It's, it's somewhere between a, a dream and wakefulness. It's like I remember very clearly what I'm doing. It just makes sense to me because that's what's happening in my dream. According to Dr. Frankowski, sleepwalking doesn't always require treatment, but there are times when you should seek help. When it's getting disrupted, when it's very frequent, those are the things that make us say, hey, we need to bring this patient in to the sleep center and watch them at night. One thing doctors here at the Munson Sleep Disorder Center can do is a sleep study, and that's where they hook you up to all kinds of sensors like this to get a better idea of what your body's doing while you're sleeping. Well, we look at what part of sleep does this happen in? Does somebody try waking them up when this happens? Do they get more violent or aggressive when somebody's trying to alert them while this is happening? So all these little pieces kind of help us sort it out. While treatment is right for some, others just learn to live with this nocturnal quirk. It's funny, no, it doesn't worry me for some reason. The main Munson Sleep Disorder Center is in Traverse City, but doctors also make trips to outreach centers in Cadillac, Grayling, and Kalkaska. We've posted a link to the Sleep Disorder Center on 9in10news.com.